Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Warcry Catacombs dungeon doors. I'll use this one as a reference, but all the paints and methods used can be applied to all the doors that come in the Warcry Catacombs set. Okay, so I wanted to start with a nice deep teal, so I took a Vallejo Dark Prussian Blue and a Vallejo Medium Olive, and then I mix those two together with just a little bit of white, again by Vallejo. So I added a little bit of each to the wet palette, and then mixed it all together just with an old brush. And this made that really nice teal colour, and that's going to be perfect for the base. And here's the first door, which was primed with black. So just a touch of water, just to thin the paint a little bit and make it flow easier. And again, it's just an old brush, so I'm really loading it up to cover that large space. And then I just applied it all over the skeleton, making sure to go right in the deep recesses, all the cracks, and giving it all one base coat. Rather than trying to get in from all different angles, I just move the terrain and the pieces around as I'm painting them, just to make sure it's easier and make sure I cover every single part of it. With the same teal paint, I gave a base coat to those alcoves as well and just took my time and made sure I didn't go over the areas that would be painted metal later on. And then once that had dried, I moved on to the highlight. And for this, I took some Vallejo white and just a touch of that teal and then mixed those together to make a nice colour that would be suitable for the highlight there. And I want it quite bright, so I didn't use too much of the base. Then I loaded up the brush and then got rid of most of that paint on a paper towel. So you want to get rid of as much paint as you can and just leave enough there so you can dry brush it on, picking out those raised areas and letting all that detail come through. So while I'm dry brushing here, I'm just taking the strokes from the top of the piece down to the bottom to kind of simulate the light coming from up top. And I put a little bit too much paint on there, so I just rubbed it off with my finger and then made sure on the paper towel more was taken down. So there we are, I'm just going down, getting those raised areas across the kind of brow. I could add a bit more there because that's the bit I really want to stand out. And started building up that highlight, getting right in amongst it all. In these little alcoves, I only wanted the highlight right down the center. So I just carefully added that in, making sure it didn't go to the edge. And that's going to give us a nice effect once we start layering up all the shades later on. There we go, so that's the first highlight done. And now while that's completely drying, I moved on to do the metal work. And I've got some Citadel Lead Belcher. Gave it a really good shake, which is important to make sure it's all completely mixed up. And then I just used it out of the pot and started applying it to all those metal areas. Just made sure my brush had a little bit of water there. Doing like a miniature or more detailed work, I definitely used a dry palette for this to make sure it was nice and thin. But for the amount I'm covering here and for the kind of level of detail I want for a tabletop ready piece, this is going to work just okay. So with a medium brush, I'm just going in there and making sure I get all the detail and taking care not to overlap onto that teal and dry brush that we did earlier. And I do that all over all the model and I do this on all the doors. So I'm doing, rather than doing one door at a time, I'm kind of doing every, each stage for all the doors and doing them as one big batch. And for the kind of metal grating, I'm using the same lead belcher covering that, making sure I get in from every angle and make sure it's completely covered. We don't want to see any of that black at all. And that's the whole piece covered now. So we've got both bases of lead belcher and that jade and highlight. And now I'm going to do the floor with a base of Death Guard green. So I use a palette for this because I don't want to use too much paint. And I just thin it down quite a bit. I almost want the, the kind of black to come through a little bit. So I don't want a really thick coat of this. And I just go on, apply it all over, making sure I don't go over that work I've previously done. And then covering that whole base in the Death Guard green. And that's all dry now. So we're going to move on to our first shade. And that's going to be a wash of Citadel Known Oil. 
and I want to get this Nuln oil over the whole piece except for the floor so I use a quite a big brush and then I start where I want most of that shade to be and then start applying it all over the model on every piece working it in if it starts to pool on the raised areas I'm just using my brush to kind of wick it off and then put it in the places I want it to be the most and that metal grating gets a coat too making sure the known oil goes in all the rivets and where the two different metals meet each other and then finally that skull that we covered and highlighted that's going to get a nice coat all over and I'm making sure I get most of it in amongst that kind of star there and the eye sockets and once that's completely dried I took some more Vallejo white and I'm going to start mixing up another highlight now and that's the highlight for the skull and those um, kind of recesses as well so this one I want a little bit brighter so I'm taking a bit of that teal again and mixing it thoroughly with the white so loading the brush taking it all off the paper towel like we did before and then I'm going to start applying that to the skull again using those downward motions to kind of make sure I get the highlight where the natural light would hit it the most and that null oil has given some really nice kind of deep shadows and tones and this highlight is kind of really bringing it to life now and that nice contrast is going to work really well once everything's dried here and then again just in those alcoves another highlight just in the center being really careful not to hit that work we've done there okay and now we're going to do a little bit of highlight on the metal areas just a very soft highlight and I wanted to mix lead belcher with a lighter brighter silver so I got the Vallejo silver mix those two together loaded the brush and wiped most of that paint away on a paper towel so this is a really subtle highlight and I just want to go along those raised areas of the plinth and then down the sides of the piece and this kind of soft highlight is just going to help to frame to frame the uh, terrain piece a little bit now with that same paint mix I just want to give a highlight to the grating and I kind of go in a bit rougher in the centre and softer as I get out to the edges so that the, the kind of centre where the grating would naturally get more light gets most of that highlight. And then just finishing off that edge again making sure that we've got that frame all the way around. Okay so with some contrast Grift Hound Orange we're going to make that nice and rusty. It's way too shiny for the eight points right now and just little dabs of that over those rivets and where any two bits of metal meet and I'm just pulling it down a little bit as if it's running down and if I get too much on there I can just use my finger and rub that off always in the downward direction okay so while that's drying I went back to the floor with some contrast basilicanum grey and I found this by mistake when I was practicing on some other pieces for this set but it turns out that if I add this contrast to the Death Guard green base it gives a really nice effect and then when I add the next stage that all combines to give a really nice kind of grimy floor look and on the floor I move back to the skull and with some contrast athematic blue and with a little bit of contrast technical medium I'm going to mix those together for a kind of shade a really good shake and then I mixed equal parts of the contrast paint to the contrast medium and I did this on a wet palette but I learned that that's no good and it really should be a dry palette for these contrast paints the the wet palette doesn't work as they go right through the paper but it got a little bit mixed here so it did the job I got quite a bit on my brush and then I applied that all over the skull and I made sure to finish the brush stroke where I wanted most of that paint to pool so in those recesses and cracks I tried to end the brush stroke there on the raised areas I used the brush to kind of wick off some of the paint and then just moved it around until I was happy with it this was the first time I tried any shade like this and I was really happy with the spooky vibe it gave the piece and I also put it into those alcoves as well and that really kind of brightened up and and kind of showed off that white highlight while the skull was drying we moved back to the floor and this is going to be another coat of contrast paint and I mixed that with the contrast medium and contrast snake bite leather and this time I got a dry palette which is an old plastic sheet from some Bourneville chocolate fingers 
And I put equal quantities of contrast medium and snake bite leather. Then I mixed those two together again with just an old brush and made sure it was really combined and then covered that over the entire floor. And that's taken it from a greeny grey to kind of more of a browny kind of look. And it gives some really nice shades combining all those three. I left that to dry thoroughly and then started on the highlight. And I chose an orange brown here, which I later changed to a shabti brown. Both work, but I think the shabti brown's better. I chose the orange brown because I thought it would work well and contrast with the green that we used on the, on the skull. So with a dry brush, I took most of that paint off again on a paper towel and then made sure to focus on those raised areas. And there we go, that's the finished piece. I was really happy with how they turned out. The skull especially, I really love the colour and it kind of almost looks like it's kind of glowy. And here's one of the other doors, again with all the same techniques, exactly the same paints and colours. The pillars for this one were painted exactly like the floor and the only difference is on that skull on the top I used some Balthazar gold and an Agrax earth shade on top of that lead belcher. But otherwise the same effect for the skulls and everything else. And for this one, the door's got Balthazar gold with Agrax Earth shade as well. And I really like how those skulls look like they're kind of moving and coming to life. I'll put a link in the description below to my blog post where you can get a list and recipe of all the paints I used and where to find them. I hope this video has helped you with your Warcry Catacombs terrain. This was the first time I've ever painted any Warhammer terrain. And it was quite daunted at first, especially having so many pieces with different colours and styles to work through. But after watching some awesome painters and creators on YouTube and researching how I was going to do each element and then a little bit of practice. And I was really happy with the result and how it turned out. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like the video. Subscribe for more Warcry content like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.